It's hunting season again, and for the fourth time in the last month, I've been asked how the heck this thing works. And what I want to talk about is friction ring setup. I've done this before. So at the end of the day, when you pull the trigger on an A5, the hammer drops and the percussion initiates a chemical reaction inside of the primer, burns the fuel, and the ejecta comes out the front end of this thing. The ejecta is the, the shot, the wad, and any powder gases. Well, if you're shooting black powder, you got a lot more powder gases, a lot more smoke. So when black powder, that counts for stuff going that way. In the equal and opposite reaction category, that thing goes to the back, hangs the bolt, throws it out. Okay, so we've got reaction and counter reaction going on here. And what we wanna do is say, for most cartridges, there is more counter reaction attempting to push the barrel to the rear than we need. So what's going on here? This is a break. You have excess energy going to the rear and we want to dump that energy off and optimally store only as much energy in this spring as we can take. Comes to the rear, we would like it to optimally be moving at about zero. When we get back here, this should hang, cartridge comes out, fresh one pops up and it goes back again. There is a cone here. This is shaped like a funnel. This ring has a round edge on it right here that pushes in that. So as the barrel goes to the rear, it's trying to constrict this thing down onto the tube. On the other side, it's flat. On the backing ring, we have that same constriction. If you're, const if you're angle to angle, when you push this together, that's definitely gonna try to make this smaller. You can really see it if I take this outside constraining band off. And you can see that if we're constriction to constriction and we squish them together, it definitely gets smaller. I'm pushing up and it's getting smaller. Same deal on the barrel. As you push towards the front of the barrel, this thing wants to get smaller. As it gets smaller, it grabs harder. So we can set this thing up that I want it to get smaller on this side and get smaller on that side for maximum breaking effect for the largest loads. You can set this thing up so dead. You can actually slide that ring on a back back there. Slide that there and turn this around so that there's no braking action. And you can set this thing up where basically it has no friction. And you can just set it up where it'll do this. Whereas if we set it up with friction, there is some braking effort there I'm having to push against. And you get more and more and more of this. So the real trick is to remember that this entire tube is a brake. It needs to be lightly greased with a little bit of lithium grease. And I mean just lightly grease it at the beginning of the season so that it's, it's not galling the tube while it's sliding down it. That's what the grease is doing. Because trust me, if you squeeze this down enough, this grease will fail and it'll just slide brass on, uh, on steel. You'll be fine. Uh, let's see here. We're gonna put that bad boy in there. Set that on here. Make sure that the notch in this ring is set over the notch in this ring. Don't don't do what you would might want to do, which is put this split down that side because then this thing can't properly move. That will go there. A5 is the only gun that had that I know of that actually has a piece of wood to maintain proper fire control tolerances. This girl here was a pre-World War II suicide safety and she needed a little bit of help and we gave it. And that all goes on. All right, so at the end of the day, that slides up there. That runs in there and at the end of the day, that's it, that's an A5. I get asked this question eight to 10 times a week when hunting season's about to begin. And I just thought I would put it out again about how that works. 
Just saying.